Welcome to Clean With Me Podcast. I'm Jessica. And I'm Ronnie. This is a podcast where we literally walk you through cleaning your house step by step. So let's clean together. Hey everybody, Jessica here. And I want to do things a little bit differently than I usually do. For those of you that are new here, me and my mom uh, walk you through cleaning your house step by step and help keep you on task and then while you're cleaning a room we give you tips and tricks and things that we struggle with and how to overcome certain things I'm learning as I get older and my phases of life change so my cleaning has changed drastically over the years and I try to incorporate all that and try to be very inclusive and my mom is in a completely different stage of life. Um, So she offers different perspective. And anyway, I want to get right into it. So those of you that listen pretty uh, regularly, you know that typically the episodes are pretty structured and we go room, 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 like um, in order, living room back to the back rooms. But um, lately when I'm doing my quick getting out of the house cleans, They've been a little different because my brain's a little scatterbrainy and, uh, you know, there's a method to my madness. I still kind of go in the same routine as I always do, but, uh, I'm just going to go through with you what a typical day lately. Now, you know, this is ever changing. So my typical days before were more structured, but this is what I've been doing lately. So I want to share it with you when I am, doing my everyday keeping up with the house clean. So with any episode, I want you guys to start out with a load of laundry. There was a four-day period, and it doesn't sound like that long, and some of you may be struggling with no dryer. I had to go to the laundry mat, you know, back in the day, so I know what a struggle that is. Uh, and my kids wear uniforms, so they don't have many uniforms. So there's a lot of laundry going on. So four days doesn't sound like a lot, but with the laundry I have going on, we were behind in laundry. So I'll probably, probably do a bonus on laundry because, um, I had some catching up to do and I'll definitely do a catching up on laundry bonus episode. But moving on, go ahead and do a laundry switch. Move your clothes from the uh, dryer to a laundry basket and from the washer to the dryer and start a new load if you're not trying to get out the door. Lately, I've been cleaning while you're doing the laundry switch. Um, I'll just tell you what I've been doing. Lately, you know, we're kind of in a rush to get out the door and I like to get up before my kids, but I like to use that time for myself because, you know, sometimes we have trouble giving ourselves that time just alone. And my kids are always with me and I love them to death. But for those of you that are parents, you know that you need that alone time and it's precious. And if you uh, notice you haven't been getting some lately, schedule some in, even if it's bright and early in the morning. I'll get up and just spend some time with myself, do a little bit of self-care maybe, and it changes my attitude greatly when I'm getting the kids ready. Um, I'm just more awake because I've been awake. And I was using that for cleaning for a short time. I was cleaning during that time, but, and sometimes I still do some light cleaning, But uh, I try to focus that time more just on self-care and just being lazy and, you know, leisurely waking up. So I've been doing my cleaning after I drop the kids off at school on my days off. I'll come home and um, do this uh, whole house rescue, if you will. And by the way, if you're not really feeling laundry today... Uh, On days I'm not filling laundry, I like to just do a load of towels. That way it's not a whole lot of folding, you know, when um, the time comes to fold. And then I'll remind you at the end of the episode to go ahead and uh, change the laundry out and sit back, relax, kick up your feet and fold that laundry. So this next part is going to be my experience and specific to me. And what I want you guys to do as listeners is just... uh, listen to what I'm saying, but apply it to your house. 
So I want you to first look at your outer areas, living room, dining room, kitchen, and what is the most, what has the most need? What's the thing that, like, for example, if you have a sink full of dishes, you're going to want to tackle that first because that's something that if you leave it for a while, it'll make it harder for you because stuff will get stuck on. And, um, which by the way, I have been really trying to instill in the whole family household and myself to do it, uh, make sure you clean your plate. Like when you're done with a dish, rinse out the plate, get all the food off and everything. That way, when I do do the dishes, it's really simple and easy. So that has made my life easier when I do it. I'm not perfect. I don't always do it. And there are days where I just have a big pile of dishes, you know, from the night before. Maybe I didn't do my dinner uh, dishes, so I just have a pile of pots and pans. So what I want you to do, if that's you and that's your glaring issue, I want you to get all your big pots and pans and um, fill, them up, fill them up with hot soapy water. Let those soak. And then just do your typical empty reload run of the dishwasher. Put all your clean dishes away to leave room. Uh, if you just have a dish rack and you do them by hand, that's fine. Same thing. Just put them away to get some room. Um, if you don't have a dish rack, there was a time in my life I didn't have a dish rack. I just used a towel and set it next to my uh, sink. And just start chugging away on those dishes. You know, the least greasy things first, like the cups. And then move on to uh, the pots and pans being last. And like I said, if that's you, dishes is your most glaring issue right now, then uh, work on those. Now, when I say this is going to not going to be a traditional episode, I'm going to jump around a lot because that's kind of how my brain works. So if you're doing dishes, work on that. Uh, if kitchen is your issue that's out of control right now, then I want you to focus on that. And if you're thinking, Jessica... I didn't really cook yesterday or I took care of my dishes. My kitchen isn't that bad. You know, I had takeout last night, but there's just like some trash in there. But my living area is out of control. So I want you to focus on that. Um, my living room, I try to keep the toys contained in the kids' bedroom. But, you know, there are times in... It's been nice because it stays clean most of the time. That, But today, for example, after I dropped them off at school, we were kind of um, making messes and I didn't have time to clean up anything. I let them sleep in because usually they go to bed at 7.30 and they didn't fall asleep till 8. So they were a little grumpy. So I, um, I kind of tore up the house this morning getting them out of uh, school into their school clothes and everything left the breakfast mess out and all the toy mess from the night before was still out so if you're like me and you have a living area that is in disarray you've got uh, pillows all over the floor and it's just a mess I want you to focus on that area um, and Again, same thing applies if it's a bedroom. Maybe you got ready this morning and you left all of your makeup and your, uh, you know, hair stuff out. There's makeup all over the place. Maybe the kids left tooth toothpaste splatters on the mirrors. And that's the thing that really got messed up this morning. Focus on that. Basically, whatever is in your household, the thing that got tore up from the floor up this morning, I want you guys to focus on that. And I'm going to go in order now and I'm going to do it the kind of traditional way. But if you want to do things out of order and do whatever is the most glaring issue to you, this is the method to every room. You do the focal point of the room first, whether it be the bed, couch, dishes, and knock that out of the way first. It's going to look like you're making super good progress right and that's going to motivate you you know if you get that pile of dishes trimmed down if you get your couch uh pillows all looking nice your throw blankets on the couch so you know your bed made nice and pretty those are the things i'm talking about you want to get the most glaring issue out of the way and your brain's going to be like we're making great progress looks better already and then 
move on to just trash, throw away trash, whatever your room you're in. And if you're like in a bathroom and you have a full bin of trash, eh, just empty it, replace the liner. And, uh, but this is my method for every room is focal point of the room, pick up trash, throw away trash. And sometimes you can carry a little, you know, Walmart bag with you if you don't want to run back and forth to the trash can. If it's far from a trash can, whatever room it is. And then just go pick up crazy and just start flight of the bumblebee running around picking up anything that's out of order and put it where it goes. And last step always in every room is the deep cleaning, if you will, the wiping down, the vacuuming, the spot cleaning, and all of that good stuff. So I will now go back to the kitchen and talk to you room to room by room in order, but you don't have to clean in order. I want you guys to focus on whatever it is you need to do. And if you, your brain works, uh, my friend's over right now. She spent the night with me, with her daughter, and she was saying that she kind of cleans the way she works is she's kind of like me in a way she'll just run all over the house and clean different rooms and that helps her stay motivated because you know she's not getting bored with like one room at a time and then she'll knock out her house faster and everybody's different everybody's brain works different some people cannot do that and they really like structural one room next room next room next room so Either way works for you. I want you to do that. But back to the kitchen. You guys should be uh, getting to the near of those end of the dishes. If not, no worries. No judgment here. You know, we all have bad dish days, of course. But I myself am going to move on from the dishes. Keep working on them, though, if that's your major issue. Again, work on whatever it is you need to right now. And then uh, next step trash let's throw away all the trash that's in the kitchen dining room area and empty your trash and reline it if need be and when you're emptying your trash if you're noticing that it's kind of funky maybe you know there's some a bag ripped open or something and it looks kind of bad on the inside if it's something you can wipe away then by all means just grab a rag and wipe it if it's something a little more crazy uh put it in your front yard or backyard and hose it out uh at the end of the episode or whenever you get a second and then once we've gotten all of the pickup stuff out of the way we've gotten appliances blenders uh i had you know all my breakfast stuff out bread and whatnot i put all that away my blenders away all the stuff that i made a mess with this morning coffee stuff and put all that stuff back in cabinets, cleared as much space as possible. And then I always say, I go wipe down crazy. And when you're doing your wiping down, don't forget the outside of your refrigerator, the handles. And when you're throwing away your trash, don't forget to throw away any trash that's in your refrigerator. If you have a microwave and you're still doing the dishes or you just stopped, uh, get that little glass dish that's in your microwave out, wash it really quickly if need be, if your microwave's dirty, and then just do a really thorough uh, wipe down of the inside of your microwave. Uh, a lot of people have microwaves that are above the the uh, countertops, which is why I say that first. Somebody pointed that out to me. So that way you can brush the crumbs that fell from the microwave um, off of the countertop after you clean the microwave. So after you do that, uh, go ahead and do a thorough wipe down of your entire kitchen. I want you guys to wipe down anything and everything. And if you have burners, I have electric burners, but they're the kind that have the little cages I don't know what they're called that you take off so I try to take those off every time I have cooked a meal and give it a wipe down that way uh, things don't get super baked on because the more things get baked on and the longer you leave it the more trouble you're going to get when you start trying to get it off and then you might use a scraper or something and damage uh, scrape part of the finish off or something 
but I do try to make a habit of cleaning the inside of those cages uh, pretty regularly. If you just have an electric, um, an electric stove that's just flat glass, uh, just give it a thorough wipe down. I've been using the pink stuff for any, and I'm not sponsored by them by any means. I wish I was, but it gets off scuff marks, uh, you know, paint on the floor from the kids, anything. It's amazing. I love using it. It's like this paste stuff for cleaning. Highly recommend. It's been a lifesaver. I, it's just multi-use. I use it for everything. So keep wiping down, move your way down to the oven, make sure the handles are clean behind the handles. Uh, I like to open up the oven and get that little top area that's covered. Sometimes crumbs like to fall right there and I like to give it just a quick wipe down. And my cabinets in this new house are white so they collect dust really easily and they didn't put really glossy paint on it so they kind of collect dust and it sticks on there. So I wet wet dust them um, when I'm doing my basic wipe down. And then don't forget your dining room table and chairs. If you have a high chair, give that a thorough wipe down. Um, if you need to throw the cover that's in the high chair uh, in the laundry or something, or just take it out to give it a thorough wipe down, by all means. And then if any crumbs got brushed on the floor during the process of all this, just do a quick spot sweep. We're going to do a major sweep at the end of the episode, but that way we're not tracking stuff into other areas of the house. And then, like I said, if you want to do my method, uh, what I've been doing the last few days, which is just speed cleaning room, 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 like my friend does and I do, uh, and just get the most glaring issues and out of order, Just use me as a guide for ideas and hopefully if you forgot to clean something, I'll say it and it'll pop into your head. But for those of you that like the structure, I'm going to keep continuing. So on to the outer areas. Uh, First things first, when you walk into the door of your house, what is the first thing people see? I want you to think of it as a visitor is walking in your house. What are they seeing when they first walk in? Let's tackle those issues first. So let's just, like I said, uh, couch, get that in order. Now, if your couch has, is cloth, uh, it has stains on it. Let's do some spot cleaning. I like to open windows that way I can see if there's any stains or anything like that on my fabric. I love having, um, some kind of carpet cleaner on hand at all times. And I used to have this one. I don't right now. But I used to have this one that had a head on the cleaner that was a a brush and it dispensed the foaming fabric cleaner or carpet cleaner. And that worked really great. I forget what brand it was. I don't think the brand really matters. All carpet cleaners are pretty consistent. And from my findings, they all work pretty much the same way. So I always get generic. But that was really handy to have. And... I used it all the time on all of my furniture that was cloth, you know, my rocking chair, my ottoman, all of it. And even when we're just doing a maintenance quick clean, you still want to check under the cushions because these things seem like big tasks, bonus chores. And sometimes they are if you're in a really big hurry, but it doesn't take any time at all, especially if you do it often. Um, to just take off the, uh, the cushions of your couch and just give it a quick, uh, sweep, vacuum, whatever you have on hand. I have a little hand vac that I use to do that. And I do a little once over on my couch and, uh, make sure my rug's clean as well. I might vacuum my rug. Uh, again, we're going to do the full floors at the end of the episode. So if everything's picked up, go ahead and start wiping down. I have a lot of mirrors in my living area, dining room area. So I love mirrors. Um, So Windex, paper towel, and I clean up all my mirrors. Um, If you have little knickknacks that need to be dusted or something, you can do that at this time. A coffee table that needs to be wiped down and cleared. Maybe that's your hot spot. You can do that as well. And uh, I usually had a bunch, have a bunch of toys in my living area, no matter how hard I try. So I'll just, you know, take those in the girls' room and put them in the perspective areas. 
Now, uh, I'm going to do a short segment on the bedroom and because uh, I think my next episode is going to be a full bedroom episode, but we're going to do a bathroom clean. So whatever bathroom is the one that's getting getting the most use, the one that you used this morning that you made a mess in, let's do that one. And you can always rewind and do both if you have two or more. But uh, again, replace the liner in the trash can um, and then take that trash out, get anything off of the countertops uh, of your bathroom and just put it aside for now. I just set it on the floor usually like my soaps and things right outside the bathroom while I'm cleaning that way I could just give a really thorough wipe down when I'm wiping down I always take my products in with me when I go I love using the generic lemon scented disinfecting wipes and then I just go to town after I've done my initial pickup of my makeup my um, you know things to do my hair etc etc and I have these little bins underneath the cabinet that I try to keep organized by whose stuff is in there. Like I have all the little kids hair stuff, etc. Um, separated into these little cheap bins. I think I got at Dollar Tree. And then once everything's cleared, just wipe everything down really thoroughly. Windex those mirrors. Um, make sure you're getting behind the faucet in the faucet. And uh, toilet, same thing. Start from the parts you touch first that's why I like using disposable wipes I like to put gloves on when I do the toilet even if I'm just doing a little quick once over and we're not going to bleach anything because we're just you know maintaining and uh just give a thorough wipe down if the toilet bowl is really dirty you could throw some toilet bleach in there or you could just give it a once over with your toilet brush and see if that does the trick if you've recently cleaned your toilets Make sure you're when you're wiping down, you're getting those little areas, the little dips on the side that people tend to, tend to neglect. You can pop, uh, usually pop the t- lid of the toilet seat off so you can get a really thorough clean back there because that's, th- that's the part that gets really grimy really fast. You want to do that daily um, if you have. Because in my house, that I have little babies that... Um, go to the bathroom by themselves so the back of the toilet seat area gets messy really quickly and then I'll just uh look in my you know tub and if there's little toys I usually have a little basket that I keep the kids toys in when they take baths and I'll just put that in the little bin real quick clean it up give it a once over I like to clean the bathtub when I'm in the shower highly recommend I say it a lot because I highly recommend it it's the only way I keep up with cleaning my shower I keep a little sponge um, that's a soap dispensing sponge and I keep bathroom cleaner in it and I'll do a once over of the shower um, every couple days or so and then once a week I'll do a whole bleaching And when you're down cleaning with the disinfecting wipes and you've got the gloves on already, um, why not just wipe behind that toilet seat? Maybe the wall behind the toilet seat too if you have like little toddler boys or something like that. Teenager boys even. Um, You know, if you you see while you're down there, if you're seeing dust or um, anything, discoloration on the grout right by the bathtub where the bathtub meets the floor, just give that a quick wipe and usually you know, does the trick. If not, you can use the pink stuff. You can use bleach. You can use pretty much whatever, uh, bathroom cleaner, just don't mix chemicals. And then once you're done with that real quickly, um, I'm not going to get too much into the bedroom. If the bedroom was your area that you wanted to focus on today. Awesome. I will do an episode on the bedroom, but just shake out your sheets, make your bed, if uh, they don't need to be washed and then same thing you know pick up the trash throw it away pick up any miscellaneous stuff um, any clothes that need to be hanged hung up dirty clothes put in the hamper um, and wipe down any side tables or anything that needs to be wiped down and last thing I want to say to you guys is don't forget to do a laundry switch And whatever clothes that need to be folded, 
Um, after you guys do a thorough floor cleaning, I want you to sit back and relax and think of it as a break. Watch your favorite show, listen to a laundry podcast if you, um, episode if you, we have a, a lot of great ones. If you have a big mountain of laundry and you just need some extra motivation, um, but don't think of it as a chore. Think of it as a break. And then, but before that, just do a whole house sweep and Swiffer or mop, whatever you have time for, and uh, or vacuum if you have carpeting. And then you have a nice clean house for when the kids come home and... I have been trying to get on them more lately about picking up after each individual project because I'm really bad about that. My friend kind of pointed it out and that's why I spend so much time cleaning because I feel like I'm always cleaning and it's because I'm not making them put away a project before they get a new one. So I'm starting that habit. It's difficult right now, but once they are tired of getting nagged at, I'm sure it'll click and they'll end up doing it on their own. They're very smart girls. But thank you guys so much for listening to me. I hope you got some uh, good cleaning done today. I hope you got your housework out of the way and you feel good about yourself. And if you're still working on it and you want to listen to another episode, you still have momentum and you want to do a closet overhaul or maybe some bonus chores, take a look at our episodes. We have something for everybody. Thank you so much for listening. And as always, happy cleaning.